Hi, I'm Elaine Harding. Welcome to my blog at stampwithelaine.com. Over the last fortnight, on two consecutive Fridays, I covered ten different ways you can apply soft pastels to your projects. It was a nice round number to finish the series with. Since then, I've found more ways to use the soft pastels, and this time it's with stencils. So in Stamping Up Speak, these are the decorative masks. Stamping Up has brought out some new ones called Plenty of Pattern Decorative Masks. These are the ones, these two, they're fold all together in the pack and then there are these two. So the one we're going to be using is this one. I'll set that aside and run through the other materials you need. Of course you'll need your soft pastel assortments, sponge daubers and a grater if you have one. If you don't then um, use your palette knife. A Versamark ink pad, Coastal Cabana ink, the Always In My Heart photopolymer stamp set which is bundled with the floral heart dies we're going to be using this die and this label die the Parisian flourish 3d embossing folder scraps of night of navy and basic white and that's for die cutting the heart flourish and also the banner you need one in night of navy and one in basic white. To save time I've already pre-die cut that to be left with a heart in the middle which you can use for another project. Um, for the white one I made this banner a little bit smaller so I could layer it on top like I've done here and I just snipped off the sides. We also need some blue adhesive back gems to finish it with and you need a fixative um, you'll get this from most art shops. The card base is half a sheet of A4. In Europe that measures eight and a quarter inches by five and seven eighth inches and in metric that will be 21 by 14.5 centimeters and folded in half. For the inside of the card you need a basic white layer which has been cut at three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches. In metric that will be 9.5 by 13.5 centimetres. For the matte layer here I've used the specialty ombre paper. These are glimmer papers and it has an ombre effect. There are four sheets in a pack, 12 by 12 um, in four colours. I don't know what the colours are but um, there's red, purple, yellow and blue. This will be your matte layer one and it measures three and seven eighths by five and five eighths and in metric round that off it'll be slightly different from this size. It'll be 10 centimeters by 14 centimeters and you want to cut a frame a quarter inches all round uh, and in metric it will be one centimeter all round. So I'm going to release this because um, I wanted to leave it intact. I've cut a frame a quarter of inches all round um, because this is specialty paper you want to be economical with it so I can use the centre this bit to make a frame for here so that I don't lose this piece that's um, been cut as a quarter inch frame I've straddled my tear and tape between the frame itself and leaving an overhang of tear and tape inside the frame okay um, and if you don't want it to stick to your work surface then put a silicon mat underneath so that doesn't happen now I'm going to put it on my card front because I don't want to lose it
next thing to do is emboss your mat layer two, which is in Coastal Cabana. Imperial, that will be three and three quarter inches by five and a half. And in metric, rounded off, it'll be 9.5 by 13.5 centimeters. Next, we want to emboss this layer. So we'll make our embossing sandwich. I am positioning the cardstock so that the pattern is even all round and you want to make sure that the top comes below this line here because um, if you butt it up straight into the fold you'll get blank space there. That's in situ and this time when you're embossing because it's a 3D embossing folder you only need your platform one and the grey plate which is platform four. And I'm ready to run that through the machine and I'll do that off camera. Adhere this piece to the uh, card base. So I've put another strip of tear and tape there for the middle. Sticky stuff is very hard to stick on glimmer paper. That's why I've done that overhang so that it will grab the matte layer on top and stick it to the bottom as well. Don't press too hard or else you deboss your um, card. Now you need some shimmery white cardstock um, and I'm using something larger than I need. Um, it might seem a bit wasteful. I'll do it on a scrap piece of paper. Actually, I will cut that down to 6x6 six because six, this is 6x6. Six six. So I'm going to put my tape across here so now we've masked this we want to press the first marking pad into the stencil where the apertures are and you may find that you need to lift the cardstock or your matte layer in order to get at all the nooks and crannies to make sure everything is covered. You don't want to drag the ink pad because it could damage the ink pad. These edges where the stencils have been cut are quite sharp. Um, but before you take the stencil off, just check that all the holes have been covered with Versamark. I'm just using the tip of the ink pad to get at the nooks and crannies. So let's check it's all covered. Yes, I'm happy with that. Bring in your pastels. Now I've got my card base in Coastal Cabana so what I'll do is I'll use the Knight of Navy one and the Coastal Cabana so now I'm going to shave a bit of soft pastels in the Versamark inked so now I'm going to take the sponge dauber and just press the flakes into the Versamark stencil and I'm going to shave some in Coastal Cabana oh dear I think I need a new sponge door but this is frayed tap of the dust measure the ombre paper that you've cut out from the center um, of the original piece. Now this measures three and a quarter. That's going to be your matte layer. Um, let's trim that down. Two and seven eighths it does. Two and seven eighths. Yeah. Spray it with a fixative. See it's coming off um, so I'd better spray it. Use it about 12 inches away from your project in a well-ventilated 
ventilated room away from open flames. So make sure the nozzle is pointing downward. So I'll give it a quick squirt. It smells of alcohol actually, like nail varnish remover. So I'm going to set that aside and then cut this mat for this bit here. Um, so how, what did I say that was? Two and seven eighths. And then I'll make it a little bit smaller. It's not a precise measurement, you know, you cut it down to um, whatever width you want, as long as it's square. So let's see. So I'll do it on the other side. And I'm just going to mark it. I don't waste anything, just keep that. You can use it for something else. Again, I've cut a half inch border all round, one centimetre all round, to preserve that. I can use it for something else. And again, I've done that same sticky uh, tape treatment. And centre it on here and press it down. Now, it's a bit generous with um, the sticky tape on there, so I think what I'll do is just um, use the dust buddy to stop it from sticking. Then remove the tape. Don't do it before because then these foam pads won't stick either. And put that on a diamond shape. This is going to go on top, so I need to make sure that is hidden. I need to use mini dimensionals here. Make sure it doesn't show, and it is showing, so I'm going to have to snip a bit off. So those two have got little mini dimensionals and I'll need glue dots for this one. Pick up a glue dot and pop that underneath to secure it. Grab one of these blue adhesive back gems to put it in the middle here. Bring in my stamparatus because it's got the foam pad cushion underneath. Stamp Happy Anniversary. I'm just going to snip off the ends here. There's but there's a score line there, so I can cut that off. Now on these labels there are pre-score lines, so you need to fold it like so. Get some glue. and glue that on like so. Now I've put some dimensionals on the label at the back but these where these fold over you also need to put glue dot inside so it doesn't pop up too much. And so one inside here then remove the backing so that's the front of the card done. Now to do the inside and I've already lined up my stamp on the Stamparatus so I'm just going to ink that up, cut up the cardstock right into the corner and stamp. And then finish off with another little stamp just here. Glue that to the inside. Make sure there's an even border on all four sides and voila, the card is finished. 
no two cards will be the same um, as you can see the second time I did it this one turned out much more light of navy blue and this is much softer and in coastal cabana i hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial if you did then do give me a thumbs up like or share if you haven't subscribed it yet then do subscribe all the links to the supplies are below this video in the show more section you can also find me on facebook pinterest or instagram if you want to read more about this then hop over to my blog at stampwithelaine.com thanks for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye.